Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. I am so delighted today to have Dr. Michael Colgan with us. He is a biochemist and physiologist and a nutritionist who is also a writer and author of so many books and the founder of the Colgan Institute in Canada and in New Zealand. He is the author of so many anti-aging books and health books that are so cutting edge. I heard about him years ago, and if you don't know about him, you really need to be listening to Dr. Michael Colgan. He has written The Perimenopause Solution along with his wife, Leslie Colgan, Strong Bones, Save Your Brain, Nutrition for Champions, You Can Prevent Cancer, The Sports Nutrition Guide, Beat Arthritis, Protect Your Prostate, Hormonal Health, the New Nutrition, Perfect Posture Booklet, The Right Protein Booklet, Creatin for Muscle and Strength, Essential Fats for Athletes Booklet. It goes on and on and on. But he's also very well known for the New Power Program, which is a sports program and a training program. He's extremely articulate and knowledgeable. He's helped people all over the world in every industry. Many, many athletes come to him because Dr. Colgan represents one of the highest levels of synthesized knowledge in this area. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my beloved guest, Dr. Michael Colgan, to its rainmaking time. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm so delighted. It's been seven years since we've had a chance to talk. So I'm delighted. I've just completed your two books, Save Your Brain, which I want to talk about in Nutrition for Champions, the 100-year diet that will keep you lean for life. Let's talk about the chronic inflammation in the body and in the brain that you're so concerned about. Yes, everyone who's turned 40 will know that their joints and things don't work quite as well as they used to. There's always a little inch, an ache of pain, pain stiffness, all sorts of things that ne- never happened when they were 25. And that is because of chronic inflammation. Inflammation gradually builds up in the body and in the brain. In uh, the book Save Your Brain, I talk about the chronic inflammation in the brain and how it gradually leads to the destruction of the brain so that in the 60s and 70s, people start to lose their memory and their cognition. But the same thing happens in the body as well. And by the time you're 60 or 70, you start to lose your joints because the inflammation has destroyed the cartilage. And uh, it's, it's nothing to do with a particular disease, although it may be caused, called osteo- osteoarthritis or something else. It's really chronic inflammation that's built up since you were about 40 years old. My mother passed away two years ago from Alzheimer's, and it was a very traumatic 10 years with her. I have to tell you, and for families who deal with this, let alone for the person themselves, that at first has some cognition that something's going, and then all of a sudden it creeps up on them, and their ability to do anything more than stay in the present is gone. Yes. Uh, Last year, I presented at uh, Cambridge University at one of the top conferences in the world. And amongst the scientists there, there is the, very much the growing feeling that around about 90% of Alzheimer's and other forms of senility are preventable. But we don't do it yet. Why don't we do it? Um, because it, it, it requires people to change their lifestyle. And that is extremely difficult for uh, any government health policy to achieve. People just are resistant to start changing their lifestyle. They'd rather take a pill for an ache or pain. For instance, most many people will take uh, ibuprofen or, or um, Aleve, naproxen, sodium for pain. And it, they're really not good for pain at all. And they, they relieve it temporarily, but they don't relieve the cause of the inflammation and they destroy the body's ability, progressively destroy the body's ability to repair itself. But that's the way that people approach illness. They want an immediate change, an immediate improvement, and it doesn't happen. That's why uh, in, the, in the 2010 uh, Alzheimer's, World Alzheimer's Conference, the experts from all over the world came to the conclusion, and it's in the notes of the conference, that the current drugs used with Alzheimer's do not work. They're useless. In fact, my mother was on Aricept for two years. It did nothing for her. Right. Absolutely 
nothing. Right, because it's too late. It's too late. Now, now we're trying to develop systems to diagnose Alzheimer's and other forms of senility when they're starting. But we actually know when they start. They start around about age 35. And one of the big things is, is the inflammation that builds up. But the brain's fairly tough. So it, it takes a long time to damage it sufficiently for it to impact memory and cognition. But if we changed our lifestyle at about 40 and stopped feeding the body garbage and did a little more exercise, I mean, it sounds so simple, but that's what it is, that, and, and stopped using uh, palliative drugs, then we would have far less Alzheimer's. And that's the conclusion of... Probably 400 of the top scientists in the world that I was with at Cambridge University last year. Michael, I didn't notice this in either one of the books, but do you notice that there's more aluminum in the air and also that aluminum is still being put in our mouths for dentistry? Any correlation when you went to those conferences? Was anything connected to that? Oh, there are many, many pollutants. Uh, That's one unfortunate part of our society, that we have polluted the air, the water, and the food. And the only thing you can do is to reduce your contact with them. Uh, For example, we, and I recommend to all my athletes that they get a decent reverse osmosis system in their house, that they do not buy bottled water, which is not pure, that they fill fill their their bottles from their own house system that's been cleaned by a good reverse osmosis cleaner. It's unbelievable what's in the water now. Oh, it's terrible. You write about mitochondrial damage. Yes. And nitrous oxide damage. And I really think this is so critical. I'd really like you to explain it to the audience. Well, um, the mitochondrial damage occurs from a large number of sources, but mainly from oxidation. Oxidation is, is impossible to avoid. But what we can do is eat the sort of foods that provide high levels of antioxidants. And the highest levels are in some of the fruits and vegetables. Or we can take antioxidants as supplements. But the food comes first. If you eat bad food and you take lots of supplements, it's not going to help you. The food comes first. Uh, So that's the first thing, to inhibit mitochondrial damage. There are certain supplements that I mentioned. uh, I have a list in the brain book that are very important. Uh, One of them is omega-3 fatty acids. And I'm sure people know about omega-3 primarily from salmon and krill oil uh, that will reduce uh, the damage to the mitochondria. And then there are uh, other fairly simple things like R plus lipoic acid and N-acetylcysteine but they're all covered in the book. Right. Um, those, those supplements, though, are only in addition to eating a decent diet. I think for a lot of people, there's so much confusion, and I know you talked about this in Nutrition for Champions, 100-Year Diet, but there's a lot of confusion about alkalinity versus being acidic. What is the bottom line on eating meat, which you also address? Well, meat, meat is acidic, so it should be balanced by a larger proportion of fruit and vegetables. I mean, mo- almost all breads and baked goods are acidic, so they're not, a, they're not good foods. We've been, we've been culturally uh, conditioned to eat them, but they're not good foods. I think it was also interesting where you talked about how the four food groups, that was a myth. Oh, yes, yes, that was created by, by industry to, to sell cereal grains, which is, the cheapest form of food that you can make. You have a very big emphasis on eating and honoring the DNA that has been around for a long time. Right. Uh, That's pretty simple. Um, If if you go ask paleontologists, they'll tell you that there is, especially those that are uh, physiologically oriented, that there is a 50,000-year lag in changing your DNA to suit the environment. Well, we've only had agriculture for um, 10,000, the very beginning of it, only 11,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent. 